thanks for checking out Chemistry Connections on the Hopewell Valley Student Podcasting Network, a proud partner of HVSPN.com, where students come together to publish content to share with the world. The opinions represented within this episode are those of the content creators only. Please enjoy the show. Hi, welcome to Chemistry Connections. My name is Owen Mahan, and I am your host for episode number seven called Quantum Chemistry. Today, I will be discussing how the effects of quantum mechanics lead to some chemistry that we see. So uh, I'll start off with a quick intro to quantum mechanics. It, it gets pretty complicated, but we can do a short survey here. So quantum mechanics is the mechanism behind the world on its smallest scale. So what we learn about chemistry and like physics and biology that we learn, that's kind of on what's called the macroscopic scale and quantum mechanics acts on the micro scale. So tiny, pretty much unimaginably small distances. And uh, the word quantum in quantum mechanics comes from the fact that certain quantities are what's called quantized. For example, energy, that's the famous one. Uh, it means that energy can only have certain integer multiples of a value, so it's not continuous. So, for example, there's some constant uh, for charge, like the electron charge, and you can only have multiples of one electron charge or two electron charge or three or a positive electron charge. So that is uh, pretty much the most important thing to gain from quantum mechanics. <clears throat> the other thing that it says is that everything is sort of vague. Uh, it says that values are quantized, but the values themselves are not fully defined. So the Schrodinger equation, which is a famous part of quantum mechanics, also called the wave function, uh, says basically that the values of quantum systems are probabilities. Whereas in chemistry, we can say that, for example, when you burn methane, it'll turn into carbon dioxide. Or in physics, we know that if you throw a ball, it's gonna land. When something happens in quantum mechanics, you don't know what's going to happen until you measure it. You can only measure the probabilities of that. That's also embodied by what is called the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which basically says that you can't know everything about a system. It gets pretty complicated, but at its most basic level, the classic example is that you can't know exactly where something is and where it's going. So you can't know exactly the value uh, of an electron's position and its momentum at the same time. You have to be somehow uncertain of one of them. And the last important thing that I'm gonna go over here is called the Pauli exclusion principle. Basically it says that multiple of the same type of particle cannot exist at the same time. So basically it says that things like electrons or the stuff that makes up protons and neutrons, they cannot be identical. At the most basic level, that is what quantum mechanics is. So now uh, we'll look at some of its effects on chemistry, which are very interesting. The uh, first and probably most relevant example to chemistry is the fact that it leads to bonding. So like I discussed earlier, potential energy is quantized. And so in a big chemical system, which has millions, billions even of quantum particles like electrons, basically all those electrons would have come together and reduce their potential energy as much as possible. And so uh, bonding occurs because of low potential energy states and electron clouds also form because of that. Like we discussed with the Pauli exclusion principle, two of the same identical electron cannot appear. So that means that in multiple atoms, you can only have two of an electron in an orbital, uh, one spin up and one spin down. And that also happens when you're bonding. So you can pair a spin up and a spin down electron from two different atoms, and that allows them to bond, and that puts them in a lower potential energy state. One use of, the, of quantum mechanics to help this is a solution of the Schrodinger equation uh, called Born-Oppenheimer method, if you feel so inclined to look it up. Uh, basically, it assumes that nucleuses are stable. And the weird effect that that has is it allows you to graph energy versus nuclear distance and uh, that we saw that on our AP exam actually. So there was a question on that. And basically it says that at the very bottom of that curve, it kind of looks like a valley, the bottom of that curve because it is such, such a low potential energy compared to the rest, the particles want to exist in that state. So as many of the particles as possible try and exist in that state and their wave functions 
uh, sort of peak around that state. And that happens when the nuclear distance is there, new orbitals will form. And so uh, more stuff that we saw in the AP exam, such as uh, SP hybridization, all of that occurs because of the way that electrons want to be oriented around a nucleus. So that's how their wave function sort of orients itself. So there's some very cool applications of orbital mechanics. Uh, it seems it seems very hard to understand and broad, but there are some uh, very measurable and even visible consequences of orbital mechanics. Uh, one interesting thing is helium superfluids. Basically, helium will take on this odd form, uh, helium-4 specifically, when it's cooled very high and under very high pressures because basically all of its particles add up so that it can act like a light particle rather than an electron. And so multiple things can fall into the same state, unlike uh, how we saw earlier with bonding, where only an electron of spin up and spin down from different atoms can come together. Uh, a bunch of them can sort of melt together and their wave functions can overlap, which is very interesting. And another thing is neutron stars. Neutron stars are so dense that under typical conditions, uh, gravity would actually turn them into a black hole. Uh, but electrons and quarks within there, which are what make up protons and neutrons, uh, they don't want to occupy the state. They don't want to occupy it so bad that they exert a pressure that can exceed gravity, uh, even gravity to the extent of a black hole. So it creates the densest material in the entire universe. Another interesting part of quantum mechanics, which uh, has an effect on chemistry, is entropy. So we learned uh, entropy, we didn't really learn what it is. We know that it's disorder, and we know how to calculate it if we're given the entropy values of certain compounds. But the way that these compounds' entropy values are are created is actually very interesting. So entropy can be thought of as an effect of quantum mechanics in the potential number of states that quantum mechanics dictates determines the entropy of a system. So remember the wave function and quantization that'll come into play here. So a system that is in seemingly perfect order at a single moment in time, uh, it actually can still have the same entropy as a quote unquote disordered permutation of the same system. So remember that some values of quantum mechanics are quantized and you can only know a certain portion of something's properties. So that is important because the amount of information hidden by a system when you know some other form or quantity of it or the amount of information hidden when wave functions overlap is uh, actually a form of entropy. It's called the von Neumann entropy. And so it is actually the exact same entropy that we use in chemistry. So an interesting application that extends beyond chemistry is black holes where chemistry, of course, would never be able to approximate the entropy of a black hole. It seems that a black hole sucks something in, so takes in the energy. Let's say you have a single atom of helium. So this helium gets sucked up by the black hole, and it seems like its entropy is lost. We In chemistry, we did reactions where entropy was changed and there was some change in entropy uh, over the course of reaction delta s uh, it seems like entropy is lost here but more importantly it seems like information is lost so this is actually impossible information much like energy is always constant in the universe so in a chemical reaction energy can change because energy that was once chemical potential is now heat energy or vice versa uh, information can never be lost. Um, an, in a system can the, in, the universe as a system cannot lose information, just as the universe as a system cannot lose energy. So <clears throat> the way that von Neumann entropy or quantum entropy tries to justify the existence of black holes that seemingly suck up information and destroy it uh, and are like an energy sinkhole, if you will, uh, it actually says that entropy is hidden information on the surface area of the black hole. So a massive black hole has the potential to have a lot of surface area, and it also therefore has a lot of entropy because the information hidden on the surface of that black hole, which is of course inaccessible, if you go near the black hole, you're going to get sucked into it. So that information is hidden, uh, and it can be released sort of by a Hawking radiation, but 
it's hidden from the observer. So that is where all of that information went and you can't reach it anymore and that's entropy. So all this is very important. Um, fundamental physics drives everything. It drives biology, it drives chemistry, it drives uh, things like thermodynamics, even other branches of physics. It relates to literally every other field of science. And I personally find it very interesting because there is just so much depth you can go into. You can explore how quantum mechanics affects just a single reaction. You could spend your entire life studying how quantum mechanics affects that and or even the orbital configuration of a single atom. You could spend your entire life studying that. I think that's very interesting because just going into such great depth of the very fundamental things can explain questions you have about how that system will work in the real world. So quantum mechanics is very hard to justify the studying of quantum mechanics because it seems so far out and it seems so irrelevant. But actually, uh, studying quantum mechanics allows for an incredible understanding of, of larger phenomena because quantum, quantum mechanics drives everything. And therefore, if you understand the quantum mechanical reason for things that happen, uh, you can understand the things far better. Uh, so thank you for listening to this episode of Chemistry Connections. For more student-run podcasts and digital content, make sure that you visit www.hvspn.com. Thank you.